Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Venti Scuba. Today we're gonna to talk about hard shell buoyancy compensating systems. There were other hard shell systems developed around the same time. And, and, and they weren't the same, of course, but they were relatively similar in that they all had a sort of a hard shell pack on your back. Reminiscent of the, uh, the Silent World, if you remember Jacques Cousteau's movie with, and the guys wore that really slick uh, plastic case on their back, which was nothing. It was just a cover. They had three little tanks in there and they covered them with a piece of plastic. But anyway, it looks like that. This is another system. This system was produced and marketed by Scuba Pro. Big, big name. And, uh, and it's very similar in that there's a tank. You can see the tank in there. Aluminum tank with a valve on top. And it fit inside to the hard shell. And these are the shoulder straps and the waist strap. Just like that. Now I need to turn this around. So you give me a second here so you can see the back. So there's what the back look, looks like. You see, it's a hard shell. And I'm going to stop for a minute because in order to show you the rest, I need to take the tank out. See, if you look inside there, you can see uh, where the scuba tank was a minute ago. And it's held in place by three Velcro bands, one, two, three bands, a bit of rubber tape on the back so it wouldn't slip. And the tank fit in there. Now, you can also see from this picture, you can also see that inside there's, a, there's an overpressure valve, a dump valve, if you like, up here. So that if you put in too much air, or if you had air in it and you started to rise, the air would expand. You don't want the bladder to burst. So there's an overpressure valve. If the pressure inside builds, then it releases some of that air so the bladder inside won't burst. And you can see the bladder. As I move that with my thumb, you can see that that overpressure valve is, is mounted on a, on, a, on a rubber or vinyl bag in there. So this hard shell actually is just a cover for a, an inflatable bag. So for all intents and purposes, uh, uh, divers, this is a buoyancy compensating device. It's the same as you wear, same thing. Be a wing type, because it's all behind you, right? And they've put this nice white hard shell over top of it. Now, <laughs> you might say, well, why did they do that? Well, they did that for a couple of reasons. First of all, it looked really cool. You've got to admit it looks cool. It looks really cool. It looks like you have some kind of a jet pack on your back. Secondly, other companies had similar hard shell packs. So there was the thought that if they have them and are selling them, then we should have one to sell too. So it was partly marketing as well. They wanted to have a hard shell pack. After just a few years, oh, not much more than four or five years maximum, it became pretty obvious to divers and, uh, and, and subsequently to the manufacturers or vice versa uh, that uh, this hard shell concept was silly. They didn't need the hard shell. They just need the once you compensate it, just the bag, which we still wear today. This goes back to the 70s, mid-70s, maybe the 80s. But other than that, it's a pretty standard buoyancy compensator. There's two, two shoulder straps, you see, and a waist strap, just that simple. On your left-hand side, just as today, there's an inflator mechanism, corrugated hose, and uh, down at the bottom here is the, is the oral inflator. You push a button on the end and blow, shell inflates. Or it actually has a power inflator. It's an early version of a power inflator. It's, it's an, an, not particularly slick, but it works. And your hose from the regulator fits onto this spigot. And you press the button and whoosh, blows up with air. These are very crude, very old types. I remember using these. And one thing that was a complaint with them was if you press, when you press down on this, they're pretty stiff. And sometimes your finger would get underneath this metal clip right here and pinch your finger, and it would hurt like the devil. I remember these very well. This has Scuba Pro printed right on the uh, mouthpiece there. You can see that, Kevin? And it has a Scuba Pro whistle. Listen. See? It says, Scuba Pro. Anyway, uh, so that's what it said. Now, one thing about this pack that was unique. So far, we haven't seen anything that's really, really unique. One thing that was kind of unique was, was their uh, method of attaching weights, because you had to have weights. So just as today, everybody thinks this is a great idea. Boy, you, I can put weights into my BCD. Not new. Here is a BCD. Granted, it's what we call a hard shell, and it has this nice plastic shell over top of the BCD, but the weights are built in right under here. Watch. You see? You pull that like so, and if this is sticking out where it belongs, underneath this plastic shell, which pops out very easily, I don't know if you can see that, Kevin, there's a trough in there, and that's where you put your weights. Now, at this particular time, they didn't have soft weights. 
shot weights, from made from that shot. And they didn't need to have bullet weights. They had square weights. Yeah. Fortunately, square weights fit into a square box. So you'd put in here probably, it looks like it'd hold about three, maybe four, three or four pounders in there. And you, you close this down over top and you put the Velcro <clears throat> uh, in there to, to hold them in there. You see, weights are in there. You put that in, pull that, ow, pull that like so to lock them in place, put the Velcro strap in front, and the Velcro has a little piece at the end with no Velcro on it, so if you had to dump your weights, just as you do today, you pull hard on this, and this pops open and the weights fall out, and there's one on each side. So you could put, I'm guessing, you put 12 to 15 pounds of weights into this hard shell BC. It's pretty neat. Piece of Vinci scuba, that's what it is. You don't see them anymore today. Once in a while you might see one that's been restored and kicking around. This used to have a, a blue band down here and a ski rip roll written on it and really uh, nice and clean when it was new, but it's still pretty sharp looking, I think. And it's a, it's a piece of diving history. The hard shell buoyancy compensating systems were pretty common in the 70s and 80s. And uh, go back and take a look at that earlier video about the, the decor, CVS. It was really unique. And now you've seen the one, some of the one that came up from ski rip roll. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you now, nah, next time you see one of these, you'll know what it is. You can tell your friend, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> All right, there you go. Have fun. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Scuba Vintage Scuba.